Well, as I, as I the, the question is again, the, 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 how long does the virus survive in the environment? And it, probably realistically, seven to 14 days, what we would expect. But you'll find in print that it's very unlikely that it'll live up to 21 days. So it, it, the chance, we can't say absolutely that it wouldn't live beyond that seven to 14 days. But in all likelihood, it's not going to be there, certainly by 21 days, in the environment. Now, in the horse, it's going to shed it much longer. So the horse is different than environment. Okay, one other question. Is that also an airborne disease as well? Yes. You're traveling in the trailer, this horse is... No, 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 wait, wait. That's one of the concerns as far as... The question is that it's aerosolized. Yes, it is as far as from here to Dr. Huber in the back, that I could sneeze on him if I was a horse and I could infect him. But just, but just, just driving down I-5, there's not this cloud of virus hanging over I-5 in the state, all right? So it's not, so it's not, no, 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 I'm, that's what I'm saying. That when we had this previous outbreak a number of years ago, that was the concern that you couldn't even drive along I-5 without becoming infected. It's truly in that very immediate area of the horse. It's not, not just drifting around in the environment. All right, next question. So the issue with it being stress-related, it can be a stress-related type thing. So anybody sports through could pop up with this, yes. correct? Yes, yes. So we're all in fear of going to horse shows and stuff, and tomorrow maybe my horse will come up with it, and she hasn't been anywhere. Is that what, I mean, I'm not panicking or anything, but what I'm hearing from what you said is stress can bring it on, so it could happen to anybody's horse in here. So the question is as far as the stress-related recrudescence, and that is critical to it. So anytime you take a horse to a show, they have another disease. So the point being made that, that this virus has been around and it's been doing this for years, okay? We just recognize it more now. We, potentially the virus has changed. There's more horses that are infected. Why we're seeing more of it now than maybe we did 20, 40 years ago, but I remember when I was in school, we were talking about herpes myelencephalopathy and recognizing that it was a latent infection. So it's been doing this for as long as herpes viruses has been around. So I guarantee you that you have been at a show and there's been a horse that's had recrudescence of a herpes virus, but it may have not shown the neurologic signs and no one else became infected and nothing ever happened. But there are horses probably at every show that the, develop the recrudescence of that virus, particularly if you have a very large population of horses. What were there, 600 some horses there at the Utah show? So you know in that there's got to be at least one that develops it. So, yes ma'am. What would you recommend to, if you were going to travel to a show, to disinfect the stall? Will Lysol work? Do you need bleach? What would be a product you would consider safe? So the question is as far as what to use as a disinfectant for a stall. Bleach works great, okay? Again, as an envelope virus, which the herpes is, bleach will get it. However, bleach is no good in organic material, okay? So if there's dirt and dust and manure and everything else stuck on the wall, you have to get rid of that first. So go through with a detergent. Good old laundry soap is just fine. Scrub down the stall real well, dry it, and then wash it down with the bleach. But bleach will get it very well. Lysol will do it as well. Okay, so it's, but the organic material is the problem. You have to get rid of that. So you can't have crap all over the walls and get away with it, okay? Yes, ma'am. No, no, I said, and I meant it. No state is, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, everybody's doing the same thing that we're doing. Everybody, according to this afternoon's report, everybody's got all those horses locked down. Isolate. Well, there's been a bunch, and there, but there's been a bunch still going. Yes. Yeah. That's. 
Yeah, that's so kind of what we've been talking about is just because of that, the, the, the stress and everything. So and then we haven't shut down this town that way. But if it's not necessary, I wouldn't have them go to a hospital at this point. It's just reduces that chance of coming into contact for them. That's it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It's his fault. I'm sorry. Thanks, Steve. Uh, why don't you call me and I'll chat with you further on that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. What was the question? I'm sorry. Last Saturday was the last time my horses were any horses that I didn't know where they were all from. And who was so how long did I need to be concerned? And because I stopped riding with my friends because I was infected with horses. How long will So the question is again that they were riding with some other horses and none of those have shown any signs or have had were potentially that potentially weren't infected. I, the, the duration as far as the, the, the isolation or keeping them quarantined if you will, the, the minimum would probably be 14 days. Okay? Again, better would be 21 days, but the minimum would be 14 days and you'll probably be safe. So even though the Mm -hmm. I would say 14 days, you probably would be fine if you've been checking the temperature during that time. Now, if you haven't been checking the temperature, you could have a fever spike a few days ago and you're not going to start showing signs, or they could be shedding right now, not showing neurologic signs, but they could have had the disease, had a fever if you weren't testing, okay? So they could have had the fever and now they're shedding a virus. They don't necessarily have to have clinical signs to be shedding the virus. So that's why, so that... Thanks, Erica. See ya. So the question is, they can get sick or have the virus and never show signs? Yes, they certainly can. They can be the subclinical sort of problems. Okay. So, so, so the question is, is you've had a horse that's positive, okay? So what are you going to do then? So the first thing I'm going to do is quarantine them for at least a month's time before they get to go anywhere. Then, then I will do a nasal swab to try to isolate and see if we still have virus. I would probably also do the uh, buffy coat just to be sure, but most likely just doing the nasal swab and send that in for PCR. No, 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 once, if once they come back negative, then they're just like they were before they had the problem. The virus has gone away. It's well, well they are. That's that again. The latently, the latently infected horses are carriers of the virus. They're just not shedding it. So they're going. They're going to have the virus. He already had the virus. He's going to continue to have the virus. Okay, but doesn't mean that he's shedding it. So that's what you're trying to identify if they're shedding it. No, if, you're, if the nasal swab is clean, then they're not shedding the virus. So, okay, a couple more questions. Are there more any questions. pharmaceutical companies working on a vaccine for this particular mutation? So the question is, is anyone working on a vaccine for this mutation? And yes, there are some people that are trying to come up with something, but that's ways off. Any other quick questions that I can try to answer for anybody? Yes? Uh, I've seen recommendations for uh, more frequent booster. Uh, inoculations. Uh, how are the state, I think, is recommending uh, every three months? That's correct. So the question. Do you recommend? So the question is, as far as the frequency and vaccinating for the herpes, and uh, aside from anything else, as far as consideration for neurologic or anything else, it's a very short-lived immunity. Okay, so truly 60 to 90 days and it's beginning to wane at that point. So every three months, if you are going to do it appropriately for horses that are traveling and being exposed to potential of this virus, they should be boosted every 90 days. Okay, so because it's a very short lived immunity. One more over here. Yes, ma'am. Anytime a new horse comes into your, your facility, the ideal way would be to isolate them for at least 21 days. 
Yep, every time a horse comes in, that's the sensible and best way to do it.